Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of AI in the Enterprise. Excited for our discussion today because it's on the very important topic of collaboration. And to help us with that, I have um, actually a neighbor, uh, a colleague, uh, here to have that discussion with us. It's Scott Wharton. Scott's actually the general manager of the video collaboration business for Logitech. And Scott, welcome. Great, thanks for having me. Awesome, thanks for joining. You know, turning back to my viewers for one second, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about digital collaboration and digital leadership. And one of the things we're finding out is as you drive transformation with digital, it changes the nature of leadership. You need different kind of digital leadership because now you're talking about self-aggregated teams. You're talking about distributed decision-making. We're into agile, collaborative business processes. And to do all of that, we need to almost layer in a new level of collaboration capabilities. These are capabilities that allow us to function better. It's, a, it's oxygen, if you will, for the world of digital transformation. And I thought I'd turn to Scott because Scott runs a business um, in that space. And I thought I'd lean upon him to tell us a little bit about some, some of what we're seeing happen in the industry, where that industry is going. And so with that, Scott, again, welcome. Maybe if you can tell us a little bit about the company you work for, and then we'll kind of get more into this. Sure. Well, I, I work for Logitech. I think many people out there know of Logitech about mice and keyboards probably webcams. Um, the group that I run is in the video collaboration business. So we basically took the idea of webcams and we blew them up to big systems that enable people in conference rooms, like the one I'm sitting in now, to be able to support people for small rooms, medium and large. And uh, we're now actually the biggest in the world for, uh, for video conferencing systems. Awesome. So Scott, it's fantastic to have you and your experience in the room. I know I said you're a neighbor, but what I didn't say is that you've, you've done some fun things in your life. Before we get into all of this work-related topic, I'd like you to tell us about something you think most of us won't know that's true about you. Yes, yeah, so prior to Logitech, I worked in all startups. And uh, one of the startups I did, I founded and sold it. And my wife and I had this dream of uh, traveling around the world for a year. So we, we got rid of our house, our cars, and we pulled our kids out of school. And uh, we basically got rid of most of our stuff. And we backpacked around the world with a bag that was a little bigger than a carry-on each for a whole year. That was pretty cool. That, that, it is really cool. What an amazing experience. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Okay, listen, um, I want to get to the most uh, interesting part, at least for me, of the discussion, which is the intersection with AI and really with video, you know, sort of colliding with where artificial intelligence is going. I think it's opening up some really interesting opportunities. And I think at the forefront of that, in your position, you must be seeing some interesting uh, trends come to light. So talk to us a little bit about where artificial intelligence intersects with video. Well, I'd say there, there's two trends that AI is playing a part. There's kind of the near term and then the longer, medium, long term where it's going. Right now, a lot of where uh, we're using AI and others are is, is uh, making the audio and video smarter. So a couple of examples that we gave is if you walk into a room and you have three people sitting down and then a fourth person sits down, Today, or in the past, you had to use your remote, or worse than that, someone would yell, hey, buddy, move, you move the remote. Today, we can use computer vision and AI to be able to see who's in the room and automatically frame things. So kind of making it more automatic and easier. On the audio side, it's really about not just making the fidelity of the audio better, but also to be able to filter out things that you don't want to hear. So uh, you don't want to hear birds chirping or car alarms or uh, lawn mowers when you're working from home. So a lot, of, a lot of that is better to be solved through AI and ML than traditional methods. So that's kind of, I think, where the industry is working in the near term to make things easier. In the medium to long term, part of our vision is that we, we say that we want video to be not almost as good as being there, but better than being there. So what do we mean by that? If you think about yeah, watching a sporting yeah. event like the Super Bowl, um, they don't have one camera that's in, in the stadium looking at. They probably have 100 cameras. And then what they do is they move these cameras around and they zoom them in and they have a director both giving you the right view at the right time um, with statistics and monitoring. If you think about it, in some ways, watching the game at home is better than being up in the nosebleed section in Miami. So part of what we want to do is take that idea of, of what you're getting in a, in a sports arena and move it into the conference room. So the same idea, multiple cameras, um, giving extra statistics and AI and making it almost better than being remote. So one example could be you're doing a job interview with someone. Now your intuition may say, all right, I think it's going really well, but not all of us are very good at interviewing with jobs. You can have your AI companion saying, all right, here's what was going on with this other person. 
they were happy, they were sad, they were lying. And maybe people may be uncomfortable with that, but I think that uh, we're gonna get to a point where those tools will be indispensable as helpers. Or another example that we were talking about earlier, if you're giving a presentation, usually what happens is you present to a group and at the end of it, you turn to your colleague and you say, how did I do? And they say, good, hmm. which is completely unhelpful. So if you had an AI that could make, give you ideas on how you could do better, or maybe even tell you overall for your meetings for the company, like how, how did your meetings do? How do you improve them? I was talking with someone the other day saying we were, we were sitting down at a meeting and if you thought about, we were, if we were in ancient Rome 2000 years ago and we were sitting over a table with food and a fork and knife and drinks, the meeting technology has not changed, but everything around this has changed. So we think you can use tools like AI to just help us get better. Love it. You know, Scott, this has been such a fa fascinating discussion. I mean, collaboration is key to digital transformation. We think it's one of the building blocks um, as digital talent globally. We have come to appreciate video conferencing and all of the associated capabilities and the layer on, layered on benefits we get from that. But what's been really interesting, actually, is in particular listening to you a little bit about where this is going in the future and how AI is going to intersect with it and actually change the experience, make it higher value added than just even being in person. On that note, I want to thank you for joining us today. I want to turn to my audience and say thank you for joining. And uh, we'll see you next time. Great. Thanks so much for having me. I really enjoyed the discussion. Thank you. Take care. You too.